This is a humanitarian challenge to all of us. Uh, what the administration has inherited is a broken system at the border, and they are working to correct that in the children's interest. I'm so pleased that the president, as a temporary measure, has sent FEMA to the border in order to help uh, facilitate the children going from one 72-hour issue into where they are cared for as they are transferred into family homes or homes that are safe for them to be. Well, that speaker, uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, of course, praising President Biden's decision to recruit FEMA in the immigration expert. They are trying to help deal with the surge of migrant children coming across the border without their parents. But what policies are planned to stem the increasing flow of those migrants trying to come into our country? Phil Wegman joins us, White House reporter for Real Clear Politics. You know, Phil, the White House is not calling it a crisis. They call it, as we know, a challenge. But the numbers uh, are now astounding. 100,000 plus just last February, increasing three times more than last year uh, at the same time. Do you think the Biden administration can get a handle on this? Well, this headline is particularly interesting because here you have a White House who won't call it a crisis, and yet the administration has sent the Federal Emergency Management Agency down to the southern border to deal with whatever we're calling this particular surge at the moment. And I think that that shows that White House messaging on this front is untenable. You have Republicans led by uh, minority uh, leader Kevin McCarthy saying that this is the border, uh, the Biden border crisis. And meanwhile, we just heard from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, whose response thus far has been to blame the previous administration for not leaving the appropriate tools to deal with this surge. I think that this is slowly tumbling out of control. Yeah, it's not only uh, the Republicans who are criticizing the president. The uh, President Obrador of Mexico calls him the, quote, migrant president. And look, here's the accusation. He stopped the Trump border wall. Uh, he has uh, rolled back other Trump policies. And critics are saying all these are messaging to the uh, migrants and others in Central America that, yeah, start packing now and start coming north. Uh, is, that what, is that what is happening? Well, I mean, we've seen the White House press secretary repeatedly say that the majority of these migrants are going to be turned away, that the border is not open, uh, that now is not the time to come. But, but like you mentioned a second ago, you have uh, the president of Mexico saying what is the, the fact uh, on the ground, which is that a lot of these people who are contemplating making this very dangerous trip uh, are not getting the message from the White House right now. They think of President Biden as the migrant president. And despite all of the uh, messaging from, you know, the DHS secretary or the White House press secretary, we still haven't heard a, a direct message from the president himself saying now is not the time to come. Do you think he should have that type of uh, message, perhaps uh, both in English and Spanish, to get that message out? Yeah, one would think. I mean, uh, just yesterday you had Texas Democrat uh, Henry Kuehler say uh, that President Biden should should come to the southern border. But not only has Biden not done that, during his primetime address, he didn't mention uh, the 100,000 migrants who are, are coming across the border. He didn't mention the unaccompanied children who are also making uh, that journey. And so obviously the administration, they want to continue to focus on COVID relief on the economy. But we can turn back to the last migrant crisis, to 2014, uh, when President uh, Biden was, was then vice president, president and see what he said then. And, and he had some pretty stark, harsh words uh, to say about um, some of the, the folks who were making this trip. In fact, he, he talked to the parents who were sending their children unaccompanied. And he said that that was a reckless and dangerous thing to do. Thus far, though, as president, he's been mostly silent. I mean, maybe that'll change this week. Meanwhile, up on the Hill, the House is going to be considering immigration bills this week. The American Dream and Promise Act, that could move to legalization. Of course, there's the president's pathway to citizenship, uh, an eight-year process. Uh, it, it, the negotiations are beginning now. What do you predict can happen and what type of bill on immigration will we likely see? I think that uh, we can see a, a repeat of the sort of debate that we've had uh, perennially up to this point. Um, you're going to have Republicans arguing that it is not time to make major institutional changes uh, that are going to affect generations to come until you actually deal with uh, the, the current problem. Meanwhile, Democrats are going to say that the current problem is the result of the fact that the immigration system is broken. Um, that it was already enough of a tough lift 
for Congress to do what Congress is best at doing, which is spending money. Uh, it was already very difficult for them to get the American Rescue Plan across the finish line. I think that something as, uh, as heated as immigration reform is likely going to be uh, that much more of an uphill battle. You know, finally, Phil, I mean, look, we have heard this over and over and over again from the politicians saying we have to put more resources at the border. We have to do this policy. We have to do that policy. We've heard President Trump very tough on that. We've heard critics about that. I mean, this goes on and on in Washington. When will they finally, can they ever finally get a, a handle on this uh, for the American people and, and for this country as well as uh, helping those who deservedly uh, want to come here? Yeah, I think this is one of these debates where you have a lot of Americans who look at the problem and then look at the rhetoric that they've heard, not just in the last year, but going back throughout the last decade. They want some sort of solution to this problem that continues again and again and again. But I think that we're, we're faced with a, a challenge, which is that you have self-interested politicians who are more interested in maintaining their seat or avoiding a tough political debate um, than, than actually solving the problem. I mean, at, at some point, this this has to stop. I know that a lot of people in Washington, D.C. would like to, you know, ignore it, to look the other way. Uh, but you have people on both sides of the border uh, demanding that something actually be done. I mean, I know that you're showing the graphic right now, and I think that's a perfect encapsulation, which is people on the southern border wearing T-shirts saying, Biden, please let us in. Uh, there has to be some sort of clarity instead of this back and forth between uh, administrations. Yeah, and, you know, finally, you know something interesting about that? I mean, someone is sending these kids. They're not this. Seven-year-olds aren't packing up, up themselves. And someone is making those T-shirts. I mean, there's a whole, there would seem to be a, a, a whole industry behind this in some manner to try and influence the politicians in Washington. Well, in 2014, uh, then Vice President Joe Biden, you know, he said, look, we have to be clear eyed about how dangerous this journey is for the unaccompanied children. Uh, yes, there are a record number of unaccompanied children in, in Border Patrol custody right now. We haven't seen a, a surge quite like what we saw in 2014, but he knows the challenge. He was sent down to Central and South America to address this. And one of the things that Biden said, he was very straightforward. He said that a lot of these children who are making that journey are going to be subject to a Use. And he said that this is something that you cannot turn away from. Um, I, I would hope eventually uh, you have uh, leaders on both sides of the aisle say, look, we, we can't ignore this. We have a responsibility. It is dangerous. The smugglers are making money out, uh, on this. The drugs are continuing. And maybe we'll hear more from the president uh, now that he's president this week. Uh, Phil Wegman of Rural Clear Politics. Phil, always good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.